Hi all, and welcome to this year's Melbourne Cup preview. Uh, as usual, the racing based team get together. We analyse the weekend's racing coming up. This time it's a it's a Tuesday, biggest race on the calendar. So uh, to analyse the Melbourne Cup, I've got Rick Chapman joining me. Rick, how are you, mate? Trying to recover from the uh, the bashing I got on the punt on Saturday, but uh, we'll we'll get back. That's peaks and troughs of punting. Yeah, that's right, mate. There was a roughies galore, especially in the group ones. Um, I didn't do too bad on on the day. I had two from three in um, Adelaide and two out of four in Melbourne with my best bets. But yeah, copped the hiding with the group ones, mate. So um, let's uh, forget about those ones. Get on to Tuesday's event and find the winner. Well, yeah, and in, in, in a year, in a race, there's 24 runners and there's about 20 real live hopes. So it's going to be a tough ask. I've narrowed it down to 10, and uh, I'd imagine, well, I'd like to think that we get the winner out of that 10 somewhere. Yep, let's hope so. And uh, something that I hadn't mentioned to you either, Rick, uh, I've actually got a special guest tipster joining us tonight as well. So uh, we'll get to the special guest later. But um, for now, let's uh, you and I give our thoughts on this race. So kick it off, Rick, and um, who do you think is going to win this one? Well... I'd like to think that what I'm about to say will run the course that it should, and that is this. We've seen some European second stringers, some travelling uh, companions, some second-tier gallopers come out here and just go bang. We saw it with Francis of Assisi, who's a hurdler. We saw it with uh, Kiwi, who's raced in two or three hurdle races. We saw it with Oceanographer. We saw it with Scottish. These horses aren't up to the cream of the crop in Europe, um, particularly in England and Ireland. But we do have three horses who are from that top bracket. And they are, of course, Wicklow Brave, Exospheric and Big Orange. If you take a long, hard look at the, uh, the form of all of them, you would see that Two of them are go-forward horses and one sits back. The one that sits back is Exospheric, and I do think that he's, he, he's recovered a lot from that outstanding first up run in Australia when third and a, and a flashing third in the Corfield Cup. And I think he's going to be extremely hard to beat, Exospheric, but I do think the best horse in the race is Big Orange. And again, if I run the rules through what the second stringers have done, and they aren't in the ballpark of these top three uh, European horses, then Big Orange should win and should win comfortably. And on that basis, I've, I'm on him to win, you know, a good size four-figure amount from Exospheric. Uh, my, my concern with Wicklow Brave is that if he goes forward, he's going to have Kiwi going forward. Big Orange is going to be up there too. You've got Galante goes forward. Exo, excess Knowledge can go forward. We're going to have a ton of pace on early. And that pace is going to be ramped up with 800 metres to go. And there, as it was in the Cox Bay, there is what will bring Hartnell unstuck. So I haven't got him in my top three. So for me, I think Big Orange will win if he, sit, if he snags him back and sits about two, two or three lengths off the pace, which will be brutal, I think, all the way. Big Orange can win from Exospheric. And I put in the hardest to beat. Um, well, you, you couldn't have missed the run of, uh, uh, you know, Oceanographer. It was outstanding. It was a typical Bar Cummings type Melbourne Cup uh, trial. So I've got, a, I've got him and, and Hickmont's horse, Al Mandon. He's a quality stayer. He's just an out and out quality stayer. If he gets a run with cover, he's going to be, uh, he's another one who can lead too, but he's going to be flashing out. So sum it up Big Orange to win and win comfortably from Exospheric will get home. Al Mandel will be right there too. And I've got uh, Oceanographer Hartnell and Jamaica all battling for fourth, fifth and sixth there. Yeah, well, that's pretty much the way I see it too, Rick. Uh, thereabouts anyway. So uh, last year we saw Big Orange go forward from his wide gate with excess knowledge. They, uh, they, they run along at a leisurely tempo. Only just faded in the end. You know, there was a couple that just had a softer runs and swooped past them. So. Um, with Wicklow Brave drawing out wide this year, um, he led all the way to win last start in the St. Ledger. 
Um, it was advised that they try and lead all the way. So from that wide gate, you can't see him doing anything but trying to push across like Big Orange did last year. And that might just give Big Orange a softer run this time if he can sit behind a more genuine tempo. And if they run truly, Big Orange is a big danger. But also sitting with them is my top pick, Jamaica. I'm, I'm not going away from the mayor. I was with her in the Caulfield Cup. I've, you know, as most people would have, I've been over this race a hundred times and changed my mind a few times, but I, I'm not moving from her now. And I've been back today and watched all of her replays, especially at Flemington. And, and you watch her run in the Oaks where she won last year on a heavy track. That sort of gives me a bit of confidence that she will run the 3,200 on Tuesday because running, running 2,500 on a heavy track is more like at least 2,800 on a good track. So uh, that gives me a bit of a confidence boost. And, you know, from that inside gate, barrier three, I think she just gets a great run. Maybe behind um, Big Orange as well, Rick. Maybe she'll be three, four pairs back at worst. And uh, if she can produce that big finish she's got, and um, I think she will, uh, she's the one they've got to beat. So I've got Jamaica winning, Rick. Uh, Big Orange thereabouts. Oceanographer, as you said, you couldn't miss that run. He's going to be charging home. I'm just worried he's going to be a back a bit further than Jamaica when he makes his run. And you just don't know how he's going to cope with those two quick runs in succession. So this being his third. Uh, those three, I've definitely got up there. There's a host of others you can place into the, the exotics. I think I, I did my exotics piece today and in for third, I had uh, 15 horses. So I'm going wide. There's obviously lots of chances, but they are my top three, Rick. Well, as always, the exotics will pay great. Uh, they can probably end up going to be about you know eleven to two the field or five dollars fifty the field. So uh, if that's the case, and, and we've got so many chances, there's going to be a multitude of combinations. And so this is the race that you really want to have. I know it's hard, but it's it's also the value race to get uh, trifectas and first fours and everything. Absolutely, and actually the one I left out of that Rick was Wicklow Brave. I think from the front. He might be able to just run a big race from up front too. So I've got to have Wicklow Brave in the exotics and he's definitely a top chance. But um, yeah, Jamaica for mine. So the exotics, as you said, Rick, will pay huge. Um, last year, I think the first four, obviously we had a 100 one shot winning the race, which our guest tipster uh, soon picked last year, Prince of Penzance. Um, the, the first four paid 300,000. So... Yeah. No, they're, they're big dividends, but generally they, the first four in trifecta pay massive. So if we can get a bit of that, we'll be happy. Yeah, well, I've written a, my top 10 piece. It's on uh, racingbase.com and bettingpro.com. If anybody wants to uh, have a, a squeeze at that, and I'm going to be boxing all of those. Just on Wicklow Brave, I think he's the interesting run on the field because that win against Order of St. George last start was quite impressive. In fact, massively impressive. Probably the best form leading into this race, to be quite frank. If he was the only recognised leader in the race, I'd have him as a special. But but from that outside gate, he's going to have no option but to go forward and there's going to be so much speed under him. We saw what Kiwi did in the Geelong Cup. Ran near, near a course record leading all the way while fresh. So he, he's got 51 kilos. They're not going to hold him up, so he's going to have to go forward as well. So... You've got so much speed underneath Wicklow Brave that I, I think as grand a stayer as he is, he's just going to find a difficult trap three wide for the first 1,000 metres or so. And if he's not trapped wide, it means he's had to hunt, hunt to go to the lead and use a lot of petrol. Um, so I feel sorry for the Wicklow Brave camp in, in that sense. And uh, I think you're 100% right in saying that from, from, from Barrier 7, Big Orange is going to get the glorious run. He's going to get a gun run. Him and Jamaica, they're going to get fantastic runs. And, you know, I just think Jamaica's too close to him in the weights to beat him over two miles. That's why I've gone for Big Orange. But uh, anyway, I've been steadily getting $16 and, 16 and $18 bets for the last four or five days, Big Orange. If there's a bit of rain about two, which they're predicting, then he might uh, be even harder to beat. So Big Orange from Exoferic and, uh, and Al Mandan for third. Yeah, and the other thing to note, I suppose, Rick, about Wicklow Brave, too, is during barrier 24, if you take a straight line from barrier one to the first turn at Flemington from the 3200 shoot, and then you take another straight line from barrier 24, that straight line from barrier 24 is two and a half metres longer. So 
A horse jumping out that wide has to cover an extra two and a half metres before they get to that first turn, which is you know, just over a length. So he already has to cover a length more than the other horses. And, you know, when we're talking, Melbourne Cup has come down to millimetres on, on a few occasions. It's, it's too big a margin to be giving away. Um, horses, you know, can win from out there. It's, it's not impossible, but they've got to be extraordinary to do it. So... Um, which is what just, you know, I've got, I've got him in that top four, Rick, but yeah, the wide barrier definitely hurts. Well, they can win from out there if they hook him behind them. I think they have trouble winning from out there when they go forward and have to do that first 300 metres so fast. And, and this year being an odd year in terms of front running stayers, he's just going to be pratted three deep. There's just no other way to see it coming to that first turn. And simple maths. He's, he's used up a length to get to get to the lead. If he doesn't cross them, he's going to be three wide. He's going to use up another length and a half just to stay with them to the back straight. So he had to be some sort of special stay to win doing that. Yep, absolutely. All right, Rick, I mentioned before I had a, a special guest tipster joining us as well. Yes. So last year, this guest tipped Prince of Penzance. The year before, tipped Protectionist. And the year before that, tipped Fiorente. So... This person is on a hot streak. Um, let's see if that can continue. So, Amy, come here, sweetie. <laughs> this is my ah. daughter, Amy. Now, every year, the Melbourne Cup, we celebrate it in our family because it is an iconic sporting event in Australia. It, it just is. It's, it's no different than watching the grand final with your kids or any other sporting event. So, the Melbourne Cup's our thing, and every year, I get the sweepstakes and my kids all pick the horse from the sweeps. This one has been extremely lucky and picked the uh, massive outsider last year. And what did Dad say when you picked Prince of Penzance last year? Not to pick it because I didn't have a chance of winning, but I kept my choice and it won. It won and I should have listened to you, shouldn't I? Yep. Okay, so this year, Amy... Can I ask, can I ask a question, Amy? What made you pick it? Was it Michelle Payne or, or you like the name or the colours? What turned you on to Prince of Penzance? Well, last year when I was going to pick it, there was all the names on the page and when I was looking on the page, I thought it was a different kind of name and I thought it could have had a chance of winning. So I picked it and, thought, and I wanted to see where it could go. There you go. Did you have that, any money? That winning logic. Did you have money on it? Um, no. No, because it's not always about gambling, which is what I tell the kids. It's about a bit of fun too. So, um, no, there was there was no money on it. But all right, let's get to this year's. Uh, Amy's picked out a special for this year. So, Amy, who's going to win the cup this year? Grey Lion. Grey Lion. Why did you like Grey Lion? Well, I was going to pick my lucky number eleven. But then I was looking through the page and grey line, grey line just caught my eye. Simple as that. Just caught her eye. That's how it's worked for the last three years in a row. And um, she's been on to the winner. So let's see if it can continue. Jamaica for me. Big orange for Rick. Grey line. Couple of colours for you guys. And uh, let's hope one of us can uh, jag the winner. Well, I hope that uh, if we don't win, that the others are lucky with Amy. And... Uh, and I did do my top 10, and Grey Lion is in my top 10. So I think he's got a good chance. I thought his Geelong Cup run was outstanding. Absolutely. All right. Well, there we have it. That's uh, this year's Melbourne Cup covered. And Amy, did you have a message for everyone watching as well? Yes. Good luck and gamble responsibly. Couldn't have said it myself. <laughs> good girl. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll be back in a couple of days with our uh, Crown Oaks preview. Um, and then uh, on Saturday, we've got the um, Emirates as well. So um, until then, we'll say bye for now and uh, enjoy a great Melbourne Cup on Tuesday. Happy snag and exotic because it's the day of days. That's my favourite day of the year. Good luck, everyone.